Welcome to Jenny's Paleontology lesson and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be introducing the upper level of the Raymond Elf Museum. And without further ado, let's get started. The Raymond Elf Museum is divided into two separate levels, with the first level being underground and the second level being on the ground floor. Um, and the upper level is called the Hall of Life, while the lower level is called the Hall of Footprints. So the Hall of Life is organized in such a way where if you walk around the exhibits and the exhibits halls, it's sort of like you're walking through time from, you know, the Precambrian to the Paleozoic to the Mesozoic to the Cenozoic and finally to today. And the Hall of Footprints is, of course, holding an extensive collection of trackway fossils, thus the name of Footprints. Um, and in this video, I'm going to be introducing some of my favorite exhibits in the upper level or the Hall of Life. As you enter the museum, you'll be confronted with this giant 14 foot tall, um, giant trackway fossil sort of right in front of you, and then a portrait of Dr. Elf to your right. And as you turn further to the right, you'll also see a time spiral. And this time spiral is actually an instrument of teaching that Dr. Elf used to sort of educate um, his students and his visitors to the museum about the spectrum of time and how really little time humans have existed um, when you take into account the entire spectrum of time of geological eras that Earth has existed for. As I've said before, the Hall of Life is organized in such a way where um, the viewers really get to walk through time, starting from the Cambrian and ending at the Cenozoic and today. There are also special lighting effects and sound effects at each different section accompanying all the different exhibits that give the viewers really comprehensive sort of look on the life at those different periods in time. And right now I'm gonna be going through each time period and picking out some of my favorite exhibits from every section um, in this museum. So the Precambrian, even though it is really one of the longest, it is the longest geological era that Earth has experienced, it has a very short sort of little section within the museum because of the lack of fossil evidence, the lack of just sort of materials in general from that period of time, just because it was so, so long ago, billions of years ago. And actually, my favorite exhibit in this short section are the stromatolites. And this is because of a fun anecdote that happened during my sophomore year or my 10th grade year um, when I was taking the class Honors Paleontology. So we're learning about the different, you know, fossils that can be found in each time period. And we're, we're, we were working on identifying them. So thus, we were working on stromatolites for the Precambrian. And one very interesting occurrence happened where our teacher actually confused a piece of petrified wood for the stromatolite. And ever since that day, I will always remember what a stromatolite is. Moving on to the Paleozoic section. So my favorite exhibit from the Paleozoic section is actually the trilobite exhibits. We have this um, sort of exhibition case with this giant trilobite inside. Um, and there are also some smaller ones around it. And it's one of my favorite exhibits because I was just in love with trilobites as a kid. Of course, in my previous videos, I've explained how much I was in love with dinosaurs. But the more I learned about paleontology as a subject in and of itself, I really realized how sometimes, you know, these talks about dinosaurs are overshadowing the other creatures that existed during the same period of time or times earlier or times after. And I just, I was overcome with the sense of I have to, you know, learn more about different creatures other than dinosaurs and trilobites, you know, being one of my favorite pages in the coloring books for paleontology as a kid came to my mind. And I've been in love with trilobites ever since. So a fun fact about trilobite is actually that trilobites get their name because of their trilobic body plan or trilo trilobic body structure. So even though trilobites vary a lot in size and shapes, they have a similar body plan. 
from the anterior to the posterior end of a trilobite, we have three different sections. We have the cephalon, a segmented thorax, and then finally a pygidium. And from the left to the right, you know, lateral sides of a trilobite, we have the left and right pleural lobes, and then finally a central axial lobe. Moving on to the Mesozoic, my favorite exhibit in the Mesozoic section is probably of the sea turtle shells and skulls. So the reason why I really love these exhibits in the Mesozoic section is because of a little anecdote as well. So um, in the earlier part of our second semester, this year as a junior, my school organized an unbounded day where you have different activities led by different teachers. Um, and I participated in an unbounded day about immigration and it was an awesome experience. Um, some of the lawyers and their clients came to speak to us at the school from otro lado and I was, it was an exhilarating experience. So after their talk and sort of their sharing of experiences, we led them to the museum and um, with the help of a few other friends, I sort of talked about um, the sea turtle skull and the, the sea turtle shells um, in Spanish to one of the clients and it was a really challenging time but it was so much fun and this is why it's one of my favorite exhibits so my favorite exhibit in the Cenozoic section is probably of the palm frond and from what I can tell Diplomistus um, from the Green River Formation of Wyoming um, they're dated to the Eocene and if you have watched my previous videos you know I've been to an amazing summer program called Stones and Bones at the University of Chicago during the summer of my sophomore year and over there we had two weeks to spend in the field and we actually went to the Green River Formation and more specifically to FBM or the Fossil Butte member. Um, and every time I look at this amazing exhibit I think of my amazing experiences in Stones and Bones and that is why it's one of my favorite exhibits. So moving on to the final section within um, the first level of the museum, which is the today section, uh, one of my favorite exhibits from the today section is probably a series of human skulls sort of lined up vertically um, upwards that shows the evolution of Homo sapiens. And this exhibit is incredibly meaningful to me because of two different reasons. So first of all, I think studying the evolution of human beings like, you know, studying the evolution of all life on earth is incredibly interesting. I'm very interested in anthropology and all it has to offer as well as paleontology. And the second reason being that of an act passed in 1990 called NACPRA or the Native American Grave Protection Act. And I think every time I look at the series of human skulls and knowing their casts, of course, I think of this act and I think of how important it is to maintain a certain level of sort of ethics in any line of work, including paleontology and anthropology, and how important it is to keep that boundary and to be respectful of all the things that we can possibly excavate and have respect for them, understanding that, you know, they had their own proper lives once, and then now they are dead. And um, millions of years later, we're just some people and we dug them up and we wanted to understand what they're living and to be, uh, to be able to understand that we have to have basic empathy and ethics. So that's all I have to say about the upper level of the Raymond Elf Museum and um, all my favorite exhibits in every single section. Have you ever visited the Raymond Elf Museum? What did you think? Are you going to be ever interested in visiting, of course, after quarantine? Um, tell me something in the comment section below and please look forward to the next video where I'm going to be explaining on the lower level of the Raymond Elf Museums and some of my favorite exhibits there. So until then, see you next time.